Hello and welcome back. In this fifth and final installment of the Ultimate Redstone Guide, I'll be covering what I call mobile components. So this will include rails and minecarts, followed by a look at how slime and honey blocks work, and other useful blocks when using pistons in redstone machines. So let's dive right in. Let's start by talking about the basic rail. So like all rails, it can carry a minecart from point A to point B. But what makes normal rails unique and useful is that they are the only ones that can turn 90 degrees like so. This turning can also be automated with redstone, but only when the intersection forms a T-shape. Essentially, the turning rail needs a left option and a right option in order to flip back and forth. And you can't force the rail back to a straight path again using redstone. It, it, it will only go left or right once it's powered. If a minecart is forced to turn without a curved track or reaches a perpendicular intersection, like so, it will always follow the southeast rule, meaning it will prioritize traveling south or east and never north or west. You can find these directions in the F3 screen in Java or just noting which direction the sun rises, which will always be in the east. If you need to make a minecart go north or west, you can either use a curved rail or simply place the rail on a slant and gravity will override the southeast rule. Additionally, if a minecart is pushed off a track onto a curved track, it will continue moving straight forward, jumping right over the curve. Now, moving on to powered rails. These are used to rapidly change a minecart's speed, and they are also considered redstone components. So when they're powered by redstone, they speed up minecarts traveling across them, and when they're unpowered, they slow down minecarts traveling across them. It usually only takes one or two unpowered rails to stop a minecart, even at full speed. And this is also applicable to slants as well. Unpowered rails will stop minecarts even on slants. Gravity doesn't apply in this case. Additionally, if a powered rail is placed next to a solid block and receives power, it can launch that stationary minecart, effectively acting as a way to automatically propel a minecart from its fixed position. Also, a minecart will bounce when they hit a solid block on a powered rail, like so. So this could be useful for if you ever want to automatically retrieve your minecart. Keep in mind that the maximum speed of a minecart is eight blocks per second, so powered rails won't allow the minecart to move beyond that maximum speed limit. The last rail variant is the activator rail, which is also considered a redstone component. Just a side note, when the activator rail and the powered rail receives a redstone signal, it will carry that signal for up to nine blocks before becoming unpowered again, as opposed to redstone dust, which carries power for up to 15 blocks before being unpowered again. So the predominant use of the activator rail is to automatically eject a player or entity in a minecart. And you can do that by powering the activator rail and then passing that minecart containing the player entity over it. Activator rails also have other functions such as locking and unlocking hopper minecarts and igniting TNT minecarts. So on that note, let's dive into the other types of minecarts. Besides empty, there are five additional kinds of minecarts. There is a minecart with a player or mob in it, a minecart with chest, minecart with hopper, minecart with furnace, and minecart with TNT. For the most part, these minecarts function just as you'd expect. A chest minecart stores items, a hopper minecart picks up items, and a TNT minecart explodes when triggered. However, there are some key differences. For example, the minecart with a furnace doesn't work like a regular furnace. Although it still takes coal as fuel, instead of using that coal as fuel for smelting items, it acts as a powered cart, pushing any minecarts in front of it when fueled. So a single piece of coal can power it up to three minutes, allowing it to push as many minecarts as needed. And during my testing for this video, I tried to find the maximum number of carts that a furnace minecart can push, and there doesn't seem to be a limit. So as many as your heart desires. That being said, any entity or block in its path will stop it. So it can push as many minecarts as you need, but if there's one chicken in the way, then it will completely stop. Also, furnace minecarts don't exist in Bedrock Edition, so if you play on console or mobile, you won't be able to use them at all. So I think the hopper minecart is worth mentioning as well. The hopper minecart functions really similarly to the normal hopper, but with a few key differences. The main difference being the pickup area is a lot bigger with the minecart version. With normal hopper, any item floating above it will be picked up by the hopper. 
but with the hopper minecart, any item around it, to the side, to the back, and on top of it will be picked up by the minecart. This also includes the area above the block above the minecart. So the hopper minecart can reach through the block and collect items floating on the block. It's running below. So this can be really useful for things like bamboo farms and sugarcane farms where you want an automatic collection system that runs directly under your farm collecting every drop in the farm. As mentioned before, the hopper minecart can be toggled off if it is run over a powered activator rail. That's one of the uses of the activator rail. Another thing of note about minecarts is their weight. Each minecart has a different weight value and this will affect their speed or how far they're able to travel on their own without running over a powered rail again. For example, with the hopper and chest minecarts, the more items in their inventory, the heavier they become, which in turn makes them slower. All other minecart varieties also have different weight values, which influences how they move as well. And it's useful to be familiar with when placing powered rails on your tracks to make sure that your carts don't get stuck. So because this is the mobile component section of the series, I do want to briefly mention honey blocks, slime blocks, and other useful blocks in sticky piston contraptions or contraptions that move around in the world. So as covered in the mechanism components video, sticky pistons can push and pull certain blocks. However, some blocks interact differently when used with sticky pistons. For example, slime and honey blocks stick to other blocks when moved. In fact, they can stick to almost all blocks in the game, except for themselves and notably glazed terracotta. It's worth mentioning that glazed terracotta is the only block that can be pushed by pistons, but doesn't stick to slime or honey blocks. On that note, there is a plethora of blocks that can't be pushed or pulled in Minecraft. Here's a list of those blocks. And depending on the version that you're playing, Java or Bedrock, here is a couple additional blocks that can be moved by pistons in one version and not the other. All right, that will wrap up the mobile components section. And with that, the entire series. I hope this helped you understand Redstone a little better. So thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.